Hello everybody, it's the Grupeteer and I'm back again with another Steven Universe Vlog, and today's episode is the zoo. And in this episode, continuing the events of the last episode, Steven is put into the human zoo where Greg is being held, and it turns out that Greg isn't alone in the human zoo, along with the descendants of, uh, of humans that have been stuck in the diamond zoo since the creation of the zoo. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other people uh, native of this land, I guess, this enclosure. Uh, there's all these people whose names I don't remember off the top of my head. Like, uh, I don't know. They have, they just have, like, names like Y17 or, like, you know, Young Adult 17 or, like, XJ9 or whatever. You know, a whole bunch of references you don't really understand. And, uh, they sort of just go about everyday life, but they're controlled by these little earrings that they have. These little earrings that sort of have this... A uh, robot GLaDOS voice on him that tells him, you know, now it's time to, you know, go play. Now it's time to eat. Now it's time for this. And that's how they simulate their day. Obviously, this isn't how things are done on Earth, but since nobody there besides Greg and Steven have ever been to Earth, they don't understand a whole bunch of basic human concepts. So when trying to find a way to leave this sort of enclosure after just spending a day with the uh, the natives, if you will, um, the, the natives find that Greg and Steven are trying to get out through the door that we saw in the Gem Heist episode, or the last episode, and in doing so, the only way that the natives know how to get out is because sometimes the amethysts will come in to either break up violence, or as they say um, in the episode, to, I guess, assist people who are hurt, but since none of them, you know, they all live in a utopia, none of them really know what being hurt is, which I don't really think makes sense because... Even in a peaceful utopia, things can still happen to someone to cause them pain. I mean, like, even internal, like, you never felt sick? You never had, like, diarrhea? You never just, like, really just, like, you know, banged your elbow on the side of the kitchen stove and you're like, Oh! Mm, feelings that I don't understand! Well, actually, I think we've all had that, that sort of emotion, but I digress. Um, so they don't know what pain is. So Steven, in an attempt to make them open the doors, punches Greg. It doesn't really do anything. It's kind of pointless. And then, <laughs> honestly, but I'll get to that in a minute. And, uh, so then they pretty much just sort of let that go because it's time for this thing called the choosing, in which two people are randomly selected and they go to the middle of this circle sort of thing and they are pretty much match made. They're pretty much put together to be, I guess, uh, married you know, I guess in this world married, whatever, just in in a romantic relationship. And when Greg is chosen to be, uh, you know, chosen to be choosed, as they pretty much say in this episode, uh, chosen to be selected, to, ugh, this is so weird because it's called like the choosing, and so it's hard to use the word choose without just, uh, when Greg is selected to be partnered with this uh, this woman, this just random woman that they've been talking to throughout the episode, he tells the natives that this isn't how things work on Earth. This, you know, on Earth, people choose one another. And when that, that means that everybody on the island just wants to choose Greg then. But Greg explains to them that the person who is being chosen can also say no. They can also, you know, reject being, uh, I guess, come on to by all these bachelors, if you will. And when that ha when he tells everybody that, that he really doesn't want to choose any of them, they all get really, really sad, and they pretty much all start chasing after him. And so Steven and Greg book it, and the, all the, you know, the people in there, all the natives start just going crazy, making all kinds of wild ruckus, and the amethysts have to come in through the door to break it all up. And seeing that this could be their chance to leave, Greg and Steven try to book it, but they're caught by another amethyst who's not our amethyst, and then the episode ends. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. So, uh, this episode was really, uh, how do I say it? It was really nice, I guess. It was a nice episode. It was nice. It was sweet. It was kind. I really like the two, uh, main natives that they meet there. There's this boy and this girl, and they both, you know, they both have, everybody there has these really weird hairdos that I just think is hilarious, and they just sort of really do. They live in this utopia, and it makes sense that they, okay, even though I said that thing about how they shouldn't, they should know what pain is, because, yeah, they should, it still makes sense that 
the uh, you know the people wouldn't understand ideals of relationships or choosing one another or you know sort of things that obviously come as everyday things on earth and I do like the idea that they aren't stuck in the you you know the what do you want to call it the pterodome I guess with a whole bunch of like old people with a whole bunch of old you know bearded guys who are like we haven't seen the light of day in forty years they're actually stuck with people who are. Younger than Greg, but older than Steven, as we can kind of assume. You know, they, they all have, like, full heads of hair and all that fun stuff. And I really like that, that it is. It's like a whole bunch of generations of people. It's not people who are like, Earth, I remember Earth. Do they still have, you know, the Beatles? And then everybody has, a you know, a funny laugh because, oh, funny old people. You're old and imprisoned. I really like that they don't go that cop-out route of just making everybody in there, like, you know, the old servants or whatever you want to call it, the old prisoners, they make them people that, yeah, pretty much seem like they could exist in this context, that is. Uh, and really, I just find it a really, really enjoyable episode. Now, what I was saying before about Stephen punching Greg and it's sort of pointless, it's not pointless. It does, it does show Stephen, uh, it does show Stephen that that idea won't work, and the eventual idea, well, not really an idea on his part, but the eventual event of all the amethysts coming in wasn't brought through physical pain, it was brought through emotional pain, and I don't know if that's supposed to mean anything, and I don't really think it does, but uh, I just sort of saw it a little bit out of place. I think they tried to play it for laughs a little bit, but it sort of did seem like like a more malicious part of the episode, I guess. I That was just a personal thing for me, really. But there is one thing, and I think the episode's fine, that uh, I'd like to address about this episode and the three episodes prior. So at the moment, I have not finished the, you know, I haven't seen the next episode being the last in the bomb, but, or I hope I think it's the last in the bomb. But, and like I, I said this in the uh, Adventures in Light, uh, Light, bending or whatever you want to call it episode and I just sort of meant it as a joke but thinking of it now it seems a lot more plausible so the thing is um and hear me out don't say anything yet the uh the movie 2001 a space odyssey uh you know the Stanley Kubrick movie and you know the Robert Clark novel uh are or Albert Clark I think is his name are uh, based around this idea that and a guy named the the skinny and Oh, by the way, spoilers for this movie that you all should see. Um, there's this guy named Dave, and pretty much in the last story of the Odyssey, he is transported through this light refraction stargate, if you will, and he's put in a zoo. He is put in a uh, human in inhabitants, I guess, the ultimate uh, utopia that a human could live in, and he is pretty much displayed by aliens. Now, in the movie, it's not as bluntly said that he is displayed by aliens, but if you read the book and the foreword that uh, Clark wrote about it, then it is. And I don't want to get all conspiracy theorist here, but this is very, and I mean, you know, uh, 2001 is a pretty well-known story. It's a pretty famous movie. So I would not be surprised. I would be very impressed, however, if Rebecca and the writing team meant this entire storyline to be either based, an illusion, or just sort of a parody of the entire 2001 storyline, especially the third act being, you know, humans in space. Uh, and I really, I really do find that interesting. I hope they don't bring Hal into any of it, but besides that, the the parallels are definitely there, and it's very, very interesting, especially with the Stargate scene and its comparison, if you want to call it, to the Adventures in Light uh, bending episode, or whatever it's called. I just, I found it a really interesting point that I just sort of wanted to point out. Um, if you haven't seen 2001, I recommend you see it, and then watch these, because maybe that'll make a little more sense. But besides that, pretty much not too much else I wanted to say. Overall, pretty good episode, and... I guess we gotta go see the last one now, so I will see you guys later. Goodbye.